The defender should join us here in a minute. The guy's been on the land for about five years. He also apparently resisted or obstructed. I don't think he wanted to get arrested. Good afternoon, sir. Are you Larry Kratzer? Yes, I am. Good afternoon, Mr. Kratzer. I'll be with you here in just a minute. You've got two old cases from 2019 we have to deal with. You might not even remember them, but uh, we'll deal with those. And then the magistrate will see you in a little bit on the new charge. But I'm going to put you in the waiting room until the public defender gets here. <clears throat> They're on the record. Good afternoon, once again, Mr. Kratzer. Uh, the yes. Chief Public Defender, Mr. Keith Stickley, has joined us, and he's going to be present during this proceeding. You've got two old bench warrants uh, for your arrest. Uh, which have been outstanding for several years. In file number 19352FY, you were charged with possession of methamphetamine and a number of traffic matters. The traffic matters were all dismissed and you pled to use of methamphetamine. Uh, Judge Patterson gave you 90 days in jail, credit 18. He gave you a $375 fine to pay. Um, your mother came in at one time and paid $50, so $325 is due. I tried a couple of show cause hearings to get you to come in without any success. So you got picked up last night. Where did you get arrested? Um, the grocery store. So in where? Uh, White Pigeon. Where do you live? White Pigeon. I had looked for you a couple times online over the years. Uh, I was even going to call you up. At, uh, come in and take care of these, but uh, go ahead. Um, actually, in 2019, I um, went down to Florida to drop off and some my uh, my ex mother in law and um, my ex, and then everything with the pandemic hit and everything, and I was stuck down there up until just last year. Where I was finally able to save up the money and fly back up to Indiana and then come over. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to take care of this one. You did pay some, or your mother did. I'm going to say that you owe three hundred and fifty dollars payment due now for four days in jail. Might want to okay. keep your money because I think you're going to be there for a while. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, five days credit one. I'll make it three days. The other case is that was a fail to pay. 
And I did several show causes and about every other year or so they'd ask me to review this. And uh, I did some Google searches and some other stuff to see if I could find you without much luck. So that takes care of that one. The other one is a driving suspended charge. You were charged with driving suspended in file number 192151ST. That allegedly occurred on August 11th of 2019. You came in and got arraigned and you pled not guilty. They set the matter for a pretrial. And then you never showed up for the pretrial. So again, we tried a couple of show causes to see if we could find you. Uh, and this warrant got renewed by me. The other case was Judge Patterson. Uh, they asked me to renew all the warrants. But this one was, I think I was the one that talked to you. Anyway, you pled not guilty. You didn't show up for your pretrial. And uh, so a warrant issued for your arrest. And we need to get that case back on track. Uh, bond in this one. Send the amount of four hundred dollars. Um, I'm gonna show unless you want to just plead to the old driving suspended charge. What I propose to do is give you the pretrial you didn't show up for. I'm gonna set up for tomorrow. See if the prosecutor can see you tomorrow morning. You managed to stay under the radar. How long have you been back in White Pigeon? Just a couple of months. Actually, I think three months. Well, we've got long memories around here. And uh, so they probably saw you. In, is that what happened? They saw you in the store and realized That's, there were warrants for you? Yeah. Are you working somewhere? Uh, no, actually, I was supposed to have an interview to, was today. Today is the third. It's a Wednesday. Okay, so Friday, been the fifth, I was supposed to have an interview at Yoder's in Shipshawana. Ship All right. Are you still living on South Elkhart Street? Yes, I am. All right. Well, these are six years old. We're going to get these done with, and I'll have you brought over here tomorrow for a pretrial with the prosecutor. That'll be 4, 4, 24 at 8.30, and we'll deal with that one. Um, the other stuff, I don't know about the R&O charge. The allegation is one of the officers was injured. And so they charge you with resisting, obstructing, resulting in an injury and some other stuff. So the magistrate will see you on that at about two o'clock. So Mr. Stickley will be there again. But yep. this takes care of those two old things. And uh, I will um, see you tomorrow morning. All, All right. right. Thank you. Your Honor, can I ask, if you don't mind, can I ask real quick who his original appointed attorney was on the misdemeanor stuff? Or was there anybody? If there wasn't, there I'll was just make the, well, the original one, his lawyer was kind of a pretty good deal. Um David Marvin on the meth okay. case on the new driving suspended case. He never had a lawyer. He just pled not guilty. We set a pretrial. He didn't show up for the pretrial. So okay. we'll have a pretrial. And if they want to package it with the other stuff, or maybe he helped reduce it and he could just get it done with. All right, Mr. Kratzer. Uh, thank you. And I'll make myself available uh, tomorrow. If, if, need be before getting appointed on the other stuff. All right. Thanks. All right, Mr. Kratzer. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Stickley.
Yep, have a good day. Good afternoon. <clears throat> good afternoon, sir. You're really missing out here in Michigan. <laughs> it's about 40 degrees. <laughs> we, we and raining been. and cold. Wish you we were here. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's call the case. Everybody's here. Uh, this is an appeal, uh, earlier landlord-tenant matter. It's file number 23714LT. It's entitled Terry and Larry Richmond versus Paula Williams. Kendrick Williams, Kedrick was also listed, although he's not present. Ms. Williams is here with Meg Bauer from Legal Aid. Andrew Rognes is representing Terry and Larry Richmond. And their property manager, Lydia Moreland, is also present by Zoom. Uh, this was a termination of tenancy case <clears throat> where the lease had long since expired. And <clears throat> who's this? The um, landlord uh, sought to terminate the tenancy. The lease was way back in 2014 and it had converted into a month to month tenancy. Uh, council cited Frenchtown Villa versus Meadows. There's Kedrick Williams. File 117MA683 and 1982 as one of the authorities to uh, <clears throat> allow a termination of tenancy <clears throat> in the face of a threat of retaliatory eviction. So shame on me, I didn't read the case carefully enough. What it says is at the expiration of the term lease, the landlord can seek termination of the tenancy based on the expiration of the lease. Once it converts to a month to month tenancy after that, uh, the defense of retaliatory eviction is available. And apparently Mr. Rognes conceded that point. So I don't think the hearing was very long in circuit court, I'm not sure. But anyway, the matter was remanded back to this court. <clears throat> um, the Defendant Paula Williams is here with me. Kedrick Williams, can you hear me? Yes. Are you wearing a shirt? No, sir. I just, you can't come to court court without. I'm a sorry. Shirt. I'm sorry. Hold on, one sir. Here dealing with two kids. I apologize. I'm sorry. Two babies. I'm not sure what that has to do with not wearing a shirt, but you're here. You have pants on? Yes. Okay, good. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so everyone is here. I got the order remanding the case back to district court. There is an escrow order in place. As far as I can tell, Ms. Williams has been paying the rent to the court. <clears throat> Andrew, I'll start with you. What's the plaintiff's position here? Your Honor, it's my understanding that Ms. Williams had informed Lydia that she's in the process of moving out. And also, I had contacted the clerk yesterday. They said the last payment they got on the escrow order was back on January 11th. And at least as of yesterday, they hadn't had anything further paid on it. Well, I couldn't tell. I thought the escrow was transferred to circuit court. <clears throat> Um, and that may be what happened, Andrew. All right. And I know, Miss Williams, uh, that at some point you were wanted to just get out of this tenancy altogether and end this relationship. Ms. Bauer, what's your client's position? Your Honor, uh, the defense only conceded moving when um, there were no other options. This had been Ms. Ms. Williams, Ms. Uring's home with her son for uh, over 10 years since her son was a minor child. And that uh, the, the 
her argument is that the primary motivation for terminating this tenancy was in retaliation for her efforts to assert um, <clears throat> rights under the lease of the and law. We never had a hearing on that. I simply made a ruling that the defense was not available. So we never actually heard any case regarding the retaliatory eviction. I think that plaintiffs would disagree with that, but I'm sorry. So go ahead. So the basis for that uh the defense that you mentioned is that uh, the Richmonds uh, failed to replace the furnace and that uh, Ms. Uring and her son were without heat for um, eight weeks. I'd have to look at the pleadings to get it precise, but roughly eight weeks and that there was some altercation in the back and in back and forth on that and that in her efforts to um, get the Richmonds to replace the furnace, uh, they tried to put some burden on financial burden, and there was an increased financial burden on Ms. Urin, um, upwards of $600 in electrical bills each month in order to keep the place warm, because we're not talking about the heat going out in August or September. We're talking about the heat going out in January, February, uh, March. And uh, that ultimately the furnace was eventually replaced, but uh, that, again, there was conflict in there and that the, the termination notices were uh, delivered and direct result of those conflicts. At this point, um, if we can reach an amicable resolution, we would certainly like to. Um, Ms. Hearing. Oh. I think you're locked up, Your Honor. Has done good hard work to get into. Oh, I'm still here. Oh, okay. I We lost um, about 30 seconds there. Okay. Uh, Terry and Larry, could you hear me? We locked you for about 30 seconds also. All right. Centerville entered a time warp, I think. Uh, nothing <laughs> happened. Centerville has been in a time warp. About <laughs> <laughs> a hundred year time warp. <laughs> yeah, we're a little behind the times. All right. I, we're all here now. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. The, the crux of the defense is outlined in uh, the answer in the appeal brief. Um, derived from the furnace. If we can reach amicable resolution, we'd certainly like to. If we cannot reach amicable resolution, um, uh, well, we would. Let me ask this. Um, so is your client prepared to move at some point? At this point, she is working on or trying to move, but the tenants, but she is in reliance on the underlying tenancy at this time. And uh, obviously, if the basis for the termination is not found by this court to be retaliatory, then there would be no dispute that the Richmonds would be entitled to have their property back. Well, there are a couple of ancillary issues. Uh, in addition, well, there is a, an escrow order in place. And I don't know why that would have been sent up to circuit I, I, I asked Judge Stutzman about it. I asked, are you going to maintain the escrow order? Um, so I'll need to follow up on that. Uh, Ms. Williams, did you continue to pay the escrow payment in February and March? No, because I took the February rent and the March rent and put it toward the new apartment. Okay. You know, I guess our suggestion would be, Your Honor, we can give her a short period of time, uh, disperse the monies that are in the escrow to the Richmonds, and dismiss this case. And that compensates her for the $600 for the two months because she hasn't paid rent for February or March, and she now will soon owe on Friday uh april and she only paid 200 dollars in january so that's more than a sufficient uh recompense for her for the 1200 dollars she claims as damages for the two months and it was actually february and march your honor may i respond? yes thank you i would prefer to engage in settlement negotiations with Mr. Ragnus outside of the court's time uh, so that we can make sure that the numbers are actually fairly evaluated 
Um, at, at this point, Ms. Uring is not waiving her right to a trial, but is not interested in wasting the court's time uh, unnecessarily. So I believe settlement negotiations would be appropriate. I did not get notice of this hearing. It turns out that um, my appearance was not fully in the, the, the case management system until we came down here on Monday and I talked to the clerks. Um, so the rapid turnaround on my end well, hindered our ability to I negotiate. I apologize for that, that, but I think this case can be resolved. Um, so Andrew is proposing, well, you're playing fast and loose a little bit. She's apparently used two months of the Richmond's rent to pay first month's rent and at some other place. And so I don't know if she has a move in date um, and we can work from there and then figure out what we do with the escrow funds. And is there an abatement? Andrew proposes to just abate two months rent. Possibly well, actually, three. Your Honor, I think it's about <clears throat> half. Yes. Uh, so do you have a move-in date for your new place? I've been, as I told him, I'm, I will be moving in about the, around the 17th of this month. Of April? 17th, 18th. Because on top of that, I had to get Larry's house back in order. Kedrick, you no longer live here. Is that correct? Yes. So the only tenant is Paul. All right. Well, what I'll do, I will um, pick a date to set this for a hearing with testimony. And that will give you guys time to discuss this matter off the record. And uh, I think everybody wants to bring this to a close. Um, and now we've got another issue that the defendant stopped paying the rent. So it could simply turn into a non-payment rent case, but then she'd have a chance to redeem it. But the case is a little troubling because <clears throat> it's it, the French town villa. It, it, it puts a landlord who has let a year lease convert to a month to month lease in a more tenuous position when it comes time to try to seek the possession of the premises. For example, I've had several cases in the last few years where the landlord wants to sell the house. Uh, the tenant was an otherwise excellent tenant. Um, there were no issues with payment, but they wanted to sell the house. And the people that wanted to buy the house wanted to move into it. And so they wanted to get the tenant out um, anyway, this isn't that kind of situation. And Miss Williams has had a number of months here to try to find something in the alternative and it appears that she's done that. So let's find a place to put this. In the meantime, you guys can. Mr. and Mrs. Richmond, <clears throat> when do you plan to return to Michigan? Um. I like to like yeah, I wish. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you think? We can come back anytime. All right. Well, I would come back real soon. <laughs> it's not supposed to get warm for a it, couple it, weeks. It's cold and windy here all winter, so it's no big deal. Yeah, that's what I was told earlier. It was nice when I was in the Keys, but all right. Well, let's take a look. Um, well, when John Edgar was down there, it was cold, so. The week of the 22nd. I have Wednesday, April 24th. That'll work, Your Honor. I have four witnesses with potentially two rebuttal witnesses. 
All right. Well, my hope is that you guys can. That's after her proposed move out date. And I apologize for that, Mr. and Mrs. Richmond, but I'm going to be gone for some of that time. And that's the first available block of time. We also have a Supreme Court visit to the county next door. We're all going to go over there on the morning of April 24th. But I will set this for 2.30 on April 24th live. It's been going on a year, so I guess it. Yeah. You want a live rather than by Zoom? Your Honor, the defense would request it. Either. Yeah, if we're going to take testimony. I'm still hobbling around, but I guess I'll be there. Well, you'll be uh, running the 100-yard dash by yeah, April 24th. I'm, sure. I'm still one leg in it right now. Oh, dear. Um, all right, maybe the 10-yard dash. Um, Wednesday, April 24th. At 2.30, that will give us enough time to get back from Cassopolis. And the parties are encouraged to continue to discuss settlement. At this point, Your Honor, uh, just so that Mr. Ragnus knows, we'll obviously touch base, but the defense anticipates about six witnesses. I'm not sure that's enough time, but uh, I said there may be some overlap. All right. And so we'll leave it at this with the hope that with the money in escrow, the fact that the defendant has located other housing. Mr. Kedrick Williams is no longer there, uh, as Miss uh, as Miss uh, Richmond said. We've been at this for almost a year. Maybe we can bring close to it. If we can't, we'll take testimony on April twenty fourth at two thirty. Miss, I want to call you Williams. Sometimes you're known as Uring, but do you go by Williams? Uring. All right. I always knew you as Williams. So. Uh, Ms. Uring, is there? Do you have any questions, no. Mr. Williams? Do you have any questions? No. All right. Um, you're welcome to come live to the court on that day. You're no longer there, but you're welcome to be here. Wear a shirt, and uh, we'll address this further on April 24th at 2:30 unless the parties are able to reach a settlement, which would be probably a conditional order of dismissal or just an outright order of dismissal. Your Honor, if I may, yes. I don't know if Ms. Bauer has time, but maybe she could go to the conference room, log on there, and you could put us in a conference room while we're still on Zoom. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Laura or... Kim or somebody, could you open up the conference room? If, if you got time, Meg, to do that? Certainly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'd like to say one more thing for the record. Yes. Uh, the defense, uh, there's been a little bit of back and forth about the, having been a year, but the, the defense certainly would have stipulated if the plaintiffs were uh, going to concede the issue, um, we, were, we would have certainly stipulated to it. I, I did not ask for attorney's fees despite um, prevailing at the appellate level. So uh, I, I want to put that out there to indicate that the defense is simply looking to enforce the rights under the law and not, and nothing more than that. All right. <laughs> Mr. Williams, do you want to be in on this discussion or you want to just go take care of your kids? Take care of my kids. All right. You're good to go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, well, if, why don't you guys go ahead and go back in the conference room? I'll open a breakout room. I'll stay here if people come back and you get someplace.
but I agree. We've got this time blocked out. Everybody's here in the same place at the same time. And uh, <clears throat> might as well try to utilize some of the time. Don't take off, Larry. Okay. I don't plan on it. Well, I'm going to put him in there also. So, okay. Uh, Lydia, do you want to be a part of this also? Yes. All right. Andy, would it make sense for you and I to speak privately initially? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Um, do you want to do it on the computer in the conference room while we're... Yeah, I'm waiting for somebody to open the room for me. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what happened, but all right, then I'm going to have to sit here and curate this. So that's all right. And I just had somebody walk in the office. Hold on a sec. I don't know your fees too. I don't know that uh, anybody heard me. I all right. Do you want me to go on? Go go ahead. They're ready. All right. I'm gonna put Terry and Larry in the waiting room for a moment. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna put. Okay. Oh, we got, you got me? All right. Video yes. is, you can hear me. Okay. Yes.